watu wengi kwa sababu ya kuwa na a wrong concept ya this subject ya predestination wame make conclusions ambazo they are not scriptural for example kuna watu they will argue ya kwamba kwa sababu god is all knowing na he plans everything uh, alijua adam ataanguka so anajua ni nani ataokoka ni nani hataokoka you know vitu kama hizo lakini ni vizuri kuweka mambo katika the right perspective so that we can be able to understand the mind of god and his plan from his perspective not from our own ideologies when we talk about pre destination we are talking about planning uh, before you know having set a destiny before time pre is before na tukiangalia kwa mfano wajenzi wa manyumba maybe mtu anajenga nyumba ya kukondesha maduka before he even breaks the ground unakuta imeandikwa wa shop to let you know so now you can actually go and book an office book a room na ukienda kubook hata ground haijabrekiwa so unaambiwa ground floor imeja so pengine uchague second uh, first floor now the truth is hakuna kitu kwa ground that is planning before time as simple as that it is having the picture of the end product before you even begin a very simple way to explain predestination and so tukasema ya kwamba ili tuweze kuelewa this subject ya predestination lazima kwanza tuelewe ya kwamba there is the aspect of time kwa sababu the planning is before time and so we said if god planned before time then we need to look at what is the time which which time is this are we talking about now we know that uh, where we stand is 6024 years from adam and 2024 from christ that is a calibration of time so ukihesabu the time that has expired from adam we are talking of 6000 years so meaning if god planned things before the time we are talking about the time that started on day one, then it means that god planned everything before he created adam which also may bring this idea that god even planned the fall of man he planned how he will chase him out of the garden he he planned everything is pre-planned if the time in discussion is the time that started on day one, that is in genesis lakini tukaweza kuwa na a lesson na tukaelewa ya kwamba there is another set of time that actually begins at the death of Jesus Christ so 4000 years was a time that god was planning before the new set of time that was beginning at the death of Jesus Christ tukaweza kuona for example that the gospel was preached to Abraham before time began let me repeat that again the gospel was preached to Abraham before time began now if we we're going to understand that statement we know that abraham was in existence around 2000 years from adam so meaning abraham alizaliwa 
in time within the time that started on day one the time that began in genesis so he is already in time abraham does not exist before the time that began from adam if the gospel was preached to abraham before time then we must understand that abraham was in time 2000 years in time and therefore if the gospel was preached to abraham before time then paul must be discussing of a different time and we know that the gospel is actually the good news the good news is after the death of jesus christ that's where all that god promised abraham becomes fulfilled kwa sababu the promise ama hadi mungu alipatia ibrahimu ni kwamba kupitia kwa mbegu yako referring to christ all the nations of the earth shall be blessed now the nations of the earth are not blessed by or through the birth of jesus christ the nations of the earth are blessed after the death or through the death of jesus christ nikatika kifo cha yesu ambapo watu wa mataifa wanapatanishwa na mungu and therefore the death of jesus christ is where the gospel the fulfillment of the promises made before his death are realized so the time before the death of jesus christ is actually what is referred to as before time galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 in asema but when the time had fully come god sent his son born of a woman born under the law when the time had fully come so paul akiongea kuhusu the time when god sent his son and the son was born of a woman then that understand is a different set of time now with that understanding then you know that everything that was planned and prepared before this set of time before the death of christ is a plan before time and that is the predestination god planned something before the time before the time came he actually planned the birth of jesus christ he planned his death he planned the salvation he planned the grace he planned the forgiveness of sin he planned many things but before that time came hallelujah and now the other thing to liweza kuangalia ni kwamba in the book of psalms god said that this shall be written for a people not yet created you know so god planned to create a people and we know that apart from adam and eve all the other children born from adam they are not created they are born we cannot say that we were created it is adam who was created but we were born from adam we all know that but god talked about a people not yet created meaning god had a plan to create a people now that is where now we are talking about the purpose of predestination predestination was not about an individual but god designed a people that was to come to existence and nikasema ya kwamba god prepared before time a new race of people a new breed of people and this breed of people were not to be born but rather to be created hallelujah and that is where we find christ coming because the purpose of predestination is where god will adopt 
the sons of man, the sons of Adam, into the new race that is after Christ. People that will conform to the image, to the pattern of his son, the only begotten son, so that his only begotten son can cease to be the only begotten son and become the firstborn from among many brethren, the firstborn from the dead. God prepared a people. He prepared a man, a man called Christ. And so all that believe in the Son of God, they are joined into this man and we become uh, members of the body of Christ. We become one with him. We become one new man. By the way, if you read Ephesians, it says that God did away with the wall of partitioning. The wall that separated the Jews from the Gentiles, that wall was removed and God created one new man. And that one new man is not you and me. That one new man is Christ. So now the Gentiles, they come by faith. A Jew comes by faith and they become a new man. Now maybe Pia Niseme Hivi at that juncture. Ya kwamba, sisi ambao tumemuamini Kristo, we were not grafted into Israel. So we do not become Israelites. We were grafted into the garden olive tree, which is not Israel, but Christ. Because the Israelites are also a branch, like we are also branches. Hallelujah. So we were branches from the wild olive tree. The Jews were a branch in the garden olive tree. So they were broken off as branches and we were grafted into the garden olive tree. And the tree is Christ, not Israel. So we were not grafted and we are not really joined to Israel. We are joined into this new man called Christ. And so a Jew and a Gentile come by faith, which is the door to this new man that God designed, God prepared, God set before time began. And that is basically the essence or the reason for predestination. So, siati mungu alipanga a specific ind individual in Joroge uh, ata, ata okoka, lakini otieno uyo ni wakuzimu, then that would be contradicting the truth about predestination. If you study the scriptures, Natulisema scriptures ni Genesis to Marakai. By the way, any doctrine must be validated by the scriptures. Wakati the apostles of Jesus Christ were speaking, whatever they said, they had to back it with the scriptures. For example, when the Holy Spirit came for the first time upon men or in men at Pentecost. What to the neighborhood walisema, these guys are drunk. Peter kasimama kasema, uh -uh, we are not drunk as you suppose, because abu ni mapema sana. Ni mapema kuwa mtu amekunywa na amelewa. Lakini, hi ni ile ambayo iliandikwa na nabi Joel. So in other words, whatever is happening, this event is validated by what is written by Prophet Joel. Hallelujah. We also see Cornelius getting born again. Cornelius was a Gentile. And there was a debate in Jerusalem. Uh, actually, Peter 
alikapetiwa pale Jerusalem akaulizwa why did you go into the house of the gentiles yet you know that we are not supposed to mix with the gentiles as Jews lakini Peter akasema mimi nilizungumziwa na Mungu akanionyesha maono na pia watu ambao walitumwa from Cornelius wakaja so he explained the story now when there was that discussion James akasimama akasema men and brethren mumesikia vile Peter amesema how God chose the gentiles how he has called gentiles into himself but then to affirm that he said that it is in agreement with the scriptures and he quotes the scripture where God promised to include the gentiles into this salvation and so i'm saying that doctrines must be supported not by letters but by scriptures hallelujah so tukisema ya kwamba mungu kuna watu wamechagua wapokee uzima na wengine wasipokee wengine waokoke wengine wapotee then it will not be in consistency with what the scripture says and i want us to read deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 this is moses and he is speaking to the nation of israel in the wilderness and he is telling them about the character of god and moses says to them that the lord your god is god of gods and the lord of lords he is the great god mighty and awesome and he says that who shows no partiality nor accept bribe he defends the cause of the fatherless and the widows and he loves the alien or the strangers and gives him food and clothing hallelujah so moses is categorically saying that this god of gods this lord of lords this great god he does not show partiality neither is he bribed sujika tunaweza pata version nyingine james nlt uh -huh. for the lord your god is the god of gods uh -huh. And Lord of Lords. Yes. He is the great God, mm -hmm. the mighty and awesome God mm -hmm. who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. Okay, Nasema the same thing. Nani ana version ingine? Can I read amplified? Yeah, please. Uh 1017 says, uh -huh. God your God is the God of all gods. Uh -huh. He is the master of all masters. Uh -huh. A God immense and powerful and awesome. Yes. He doesn't play favorites, takes no bribes. Aha, read that again. He doesn't? He doesn't play favorites. He doesn't play favorites. Takes no bribes. He takes no bribe. Makes sure orphans and widows are treated fairly. Read that again. Makes sure orphans and widows are treated fairly. Uh -huh takes loving care of foreigners by seeing that they get food and clothes hallelujah si huyo ni mungu mzuri sana by the way ye ndiye mungu wa miungu hallelujah he is the lord the god of gods and the lord of lords sasa kama bado unangangana na tumiungu to wa kikuyu Tumiungu sujito wa jaluo, jameni, hama. Wachana na tumiungu. Kuja kwa huyu mungu, ambaye ni mungu mzuri, mungu wa miungu. He is a great God, mighty and awesome. But one thing about this God is that he does not have favorites. He does not show partiality. In other words, he makes sure that all have an equal playground. And I know there are, there are things to mesoma in the scriptures before Christ came. Ambazo zina tatanisha this statement. For example, 
when he said that Jacob I love and Esau I hate. Please, I will explain why that was so. Okay? When God was preparing for the man in Christ, men were already fallen. All men, whether they are Israelite that he chose, whether it is Esau or Jacob. By the way, Jacob was a con man. So God did not choose them because of how good they were. God chose them because he had a plan and he needed a people to work through in order to bring to fulfillment whatever he was doing. We need to understand that the character of God is that he does not have favorism, neither does he show partiality, and he does not take bribe. In other words, you cannot twist the mind of God by bribing him. Na pia niseme ya kwamba kama unafikiria kwamba unaweza pinda Mungu kwa pengine kufunga, you know kuna watu ufunga ili Mungu abadilishe mawazo yake. He cannot change his plan, his purpose and his order of things. By the way, kama Mungu amesema njia ya kupatanishwa na yeye ni kumwamini Yesu. Jameni uwezi anza kuto, kupatia mayatima chakula or, you know wajane wapatie you cannot change you cannot use generosity to substitute your faith in Jesus for salvation. God cannot be bribed. He cannot change his mind because you have used a different ideology. You know? Kama njia ya wokovu ni kumuamini yeye alie mtuma. Ni kumuamini Yesu Kristo. Then skiza he. Hawezi ukafunga uokoke. Hawezi ukakuwa generous uokoke. By the way, Cornelius was very generous. Maraika alitumwa kwake akaambiwa Cornelius matendo yako yamekuja mbele za Mungu as a memorial. Fanya hivi, tumana jopa Peter atakuja kukuambia what you must do. Why? Because men can only be born again when they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ preached to them. And that's why you cannot bribe God. You cannot twist God by doing other things outside the order he has set. He shows no partiality and he does not accept bribe. Hallelujah. Now that is in Deuteronomy. That is Moses who was speaking to the house of Israel. Romans chapter 2 verse 8. Lucy and Joki, are you there? You can read for us. Yes, I'm there. Okay, read for us up to verse 11. Yes. Okay. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, mm -hmm. but obey unrighteousness, mm -hmm. indignation and wrath, mm -hmm. tribulation mm -hmm. and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek, mm -hmm. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, mm -hmm. to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. For there is no partiality with God. For there is no partiality with God. Now, that is Paul. Thank you. That is Paul. And uh, let me not discuss the issue he has addressed there about self-seeking and uh, how those who are seeking glory and honor these are two different people those who's, who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth and those who seek glory and honor those are two different people but he says that this god will actually he will give to each one according to whatever he is doing whether he is a self-seeker and that may be a different thing i'll talk about uh, what that means and whether you are seeking glory honor and peace and all that but he says to the jews first and also to the greek why because for there is no partiality with god so 
Paul anatuambia there is no partiality with God. We can also read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 9. Timamu bwana siwe. Amen. Tusome verse 6 uh, verse 9 of Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 verse 9 in a same um, and you masters do the same things to them mm -hmm. giving up threatening mm -hmm. knowing that your own master also is in heaven mm -hmm. and there is no partiality with him aha santi so in Ephesians chapter 6 Paul is talking about how we ought to conduct ourselves in the body of Christ so he has talked about the relationship of a parent and the children, how they ought to conduct the husband and wife. He has talked about a master and his servant. And so Pale Chini happened to Ponasema, and you masters do the same thing to them. Who are the them? The them are the servants. Ukisoma hapo ju giving up threatening yani masters should not threaten their servants because at the end of the day they are also fellow brethren whether someone is a master and the other one is a servant in christ we are brothers and sisters and that's why he's saying to the masters they should give up threatening knowing that your master is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. In other words, Mungu hakuangali wewe ni master na wewe ni servant. Wewe ni woman, wewe ni man. Wewe ni mtoto. God has no favorism. Tukingia ndani ya Kristo, the Bible says that there is now no difference between a Jew and a Gentile, between a male or a female. We become one in Christ. The point here I'm trying to emphasize is that in God, there is no favorism. God has no partiality. We can also see from Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 17. Eri? Yes, yes, I'm here. You have your Bible? Yes. Please read for us 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 17. Verse 17 this is the English Arab version. Yeah. Uh, 17 says, And if you call on him as father mm -hmm. who judges impartial, impartially mm -hmm. according to each one's needs, mm -hmm. conduct yourselves with fear and throughout the time of your exile. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, Eri. James, who can version in Guinea? New King James. New King James. And if you call on the Father who without partiality, mm -hmm. judging according to each one's work, mm -hmm. conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here mm -hmm. in fear, mm -hmm. knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like mm -hmm. silver or gold mm -hmm. from your aimless conduct received by tradition mm -hmm. from your fathers, mm -hmm. but with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Asante. So, again, Peter anatuambia hivi, that if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each man's work, then conduct yourselves throughout your time of your stay here in fear. So, what is Peter saying? Peter is also affirming to us that God judges without partiality. Paul is saying the same thing and we saw that Moses said the same thing. Now, tukasema ya kwamba mungu amechagua watu wakuangamia na watu ambao ni wakuokoka, then tutakuwa tumekiuka ukweli Wa maandiko. We will have gone contrary to the doctrine of the scriptures. Both the scripture and the letters are saying that God has no favorites. God has no favorism. God has 
given a common ground to all men. Actually, Jesus was speaking in uh, John chapter 3. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. So anyone who believes in the son of God will not perish. Not a specific people. I've had some people say that, you know, the, the faith we have is given. Understand that the faith that brings salvation and the grace is a product of the gospel. If the message is preached, then it comes with the grace that brings salvation. You have to choose to believe. You have to trust and obey the message, the gospel. The grace to be saved is available within the gospel. And that's why all of us, we must be committed to preach the gospel to them that are still outside Christ. So this door of salvation is actually opened to all men. I want to read Romans 16 uh, verse 25. Paul says, Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writing by the commandment of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey. So the revelation of this mystery, the revelation of the plan of God that was hidden for other generation for a long time in the past has been made available has been revealed so that all nations might believe why might believe not that all nation should believe but rather might because there is your part there is my part it is your responsibility it is my responsibility to believe and to obey or to disbelieve and not obey. So you can't blame God for anything. Men are not robots. Men have choices to make. Naniseme hivi, there are people that God planned in the past. He raised them, he nurtured them for a specific assignment in his program. But they actually went astray. They never went the way God had chosen. And it's their choice. A man has a choice to make. By the way, after he had chosen the 12 tribes, we know by the time Jesus is born, the 10 nations are already rejected. They were rejected because they disobeyed. Judas Iscariot. Please understand that God never appointed Judas for the task. God had already predestined a task. And the task was that his son must be betrayed. His son must be sold. By the way, it is written in the scriptures. Yakwamba ingebidi kwa senti, sujit ni senti tharathini, mtuwa ampatiane kwa his enemies. You find that in the scriptures. And so that role was set just like Jesus was predestined to be born of a woman. So there had to be a virgin, according to Isaiah, who will be in the position to fulfill what God had said. And when the angel came to Mary, Mary said, let it be done according to your will or to your word. So Judas only qualified for the job because Judas before he decided to go and get the money he got to say who Jesus is, we know that he was the custodian of you know the wealth 
or the monies that came into the ministry. He was the treasurer in the ministry of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that he was a thief. Hey. Wakati Mary alivunja the, the arabasta box na kamwagia mafuta, Judas complained. Akasema mbona hayo mafuta hayange uzoa ya saidie wa sio jiweza. And Jesus said that the poor you have them. But then there is a comment there that Judas said so because he was a thief. So when a job was presented, it is not that God had ordained Judas from birth that he will do that. But rather, Judas was the man who qualified for that job. Hallelujah. The choices you make will determine whether you will go to hell or you will spend eternity with the Lord. It is not that you are predestined to for hell. No one is designed for hell. In fact, when Jesus is speaking in Matthew 25, he says that goats, they will be cast into the lake of fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So, uh, the lake of fire was not prepared for men. The lake of fire was prepared for Satan and his angels. Unfortunately, anybody that will not have received, believed in the Son of God will also head there. Not because God has chosen so, but rather because you have made a choice. So God revealed this mystery so that all nations might believe. All nations might believe. So to believe is a choice. Hallelujah. So what we have said in many words is that God, our God, the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the great God, the mighty God, the awesome God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, in Him there is no favorism. Hallelujah. So, to kisema ya kwamba kuna watu walichagua wangamie na wengine wa okoke, then it goes contrary to the character of this God who has no partiality nor favorism. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is it understood? Yes. Is there a question? This uh, this uh, scripture, Second mm -hmm. Timothy chapter two verse nineteen. Yes, which talks about uh, that uh, God's firm foundation stands bearing His seal. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows those who are His, mm -hmm. and let let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Uh -huh. Does that imply that God already knows who are His? He knows them because those who belong to him, those who have obeyed the gospel, they are actually departing from iniquity. Maybe ikatika lessons in Azokuja, nitaelezea what is this departing from iniquity and in relation to the obedience to the gospel. Remember we are talking about believing and obeying the gospel. So, anajua walio wake because of this evidence of departing from iniquity. Nasio vile dini mefundisha. That is not the case. I'll explain the life that we have to live out, to walk out of. At this point, ningependa maybe we, we grasp, we understand the basic principles outlined in the scripture. For example, kile tumesoma leo, understand that God has no favorism. And so, if there is such a verse that in your mind it may sound like in a contradict kile the scriptures and the writings of the apostles are saying, then what we need is to seek what that passage means and we can get a better understanding within the context. But I'll explain that as we proceed. Timam? Uh, I think maybe in the next lesson, lockdown is a jaribu to fafanulia kwa sababu there is a 
I think they are saying uh, kama sasa venye kuna fanyika vita ya Palestine na Israel mhm ni kama hizo mhm and uh, there are many things that are going around that uh, Israel is a special nation yes na ilikuwa declared evil mm-hmm. they are special people now coming to now th- that point of mm-hmm. god shows no partiality yes uh, i think nataka uh, <laughs> kujua <laughs> yes yes uh, what what's the stand of god and israel okay. at the moment asante uh, nitaguza tu kidogo lakini allow me there are many things i'll explain because the nation of israel is still within the prophetic prophecy god has already spoken some things which are yet to be fulfilled in line with the nation of israel na niseme ya kwamba when this issue ya vita between palestinians and uh, israel inaendelea there are things that are bound to happen kwa sababu ya the plan ambayo bado inaendelea like for example the time we are in is the time of the gentiles the gentiles must come in before god would uh, continue with the program that started some times ago when i say and so at this point as we stand we as believers we can't say that uh, tuna tunaombea Israeli na tunalaani wa Palestini that is completely outside the mind of God everybody whether a Jew or a Palestine must come in through Christ so at this point in time understand that whether the Palestinians are the Jews they are all accepted in Christ if they believe lakini kuna mambo ambayo yamepangwa na lazima yatatendeka lakini nitaelezea Israeli they are all as a nation not as individuals as a nation uh, with the prophetic you know utterances whatever was spoken uh, must be fulfilled sini sawa timam yeah at this point unaweza ombea Israeli na uombe the Palestinian they are all human beings uh, and uh, those who are suffering this yet they are less no uh, but there are things ambazo lazima zitatendeka because of God's program not because he has hated some or chosen some no amen james Yeah thank you very much Mwalim for the for the lesson. Yes. Yeah we continue to to grow. Yeah and continue to understand and I I, I really appreciate Timam and Eli for the questions. Of course when we ask questions it means that uh, we are understanding what is being taught. Yes. And we'll still be able to to get more insights into the same. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe because of time and some of us are going to for duty very early in the morning yeah uh, I, will, i will beg that we leave it at that okay. uh, with a word of grace and now with the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god, god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen, amen.